obviously we did a, a good job early in the first half of fighting. Um, also, you know, we, we started, we set the tone. We talked about setting the tone, um, especially early in the game. That's cost us in some of our losses and even some of our wins um, thus far this season. So I think for the most part, we did a great job of that, of setting the tone early. Um, it started with our physicality. It started with our defense. I think we did a good job of mixing in and out of the zone and the man, um, and it got them confused. And even though they play a slow Slow, a slower pace than most teams, I think it got them stagnant. Um, and I think we did a great job of going in and out of our zone to get them, give them a, a, a different look um, than what, what you're accustomed to when you get a Kansas State team, which is our, our man-to-man's uh, defense. Um, but then going to the second half, I think we just didn't sustain that physicality, that energy. Um, we missed some bunnies at the rim, some layups at the rim. Um, obviously going 0 for 9 um, in, in the second half from 3 uh, is big because it comes to a point where you just got to make timely offensive plays, whether it's timely layups or timely um, wide open threes. And that, that, that also is predicated on our seven uh, assists that we only had in that game. Um, you make some threes, you make some layups, um, and those assist level raises. But obviously, um, we fought. Um, we, we were shorthanded, but we fought hard. Um, but we don't accept no more victories. We told our guys in that locker room we don't accept more victories. Uh, next step is to get better. We obviously, is a growing. Um, but we're, we're going to be stay connected and we got a, we got a strong team. We got a strong team that got a good morale right now in our locker room. Okay, uh, first question to Dylan Sherwood. Hey, Shane, just what was kind of the drive for these guys early on, knowing that they're, they're shorthanded, they only got two, you guys only have your two seniors and Mark and, and Mike. But a young group to fight like this, you know, just how big is the confidence for this for this team being shorthanded tonight? I think it's obviously a lot of confidence, like you said, for our young guys. Obviously, it's an opportunity for us to still grow. I think it's a big confidence booster for a guy like Carlton Lagarde uh, to start a game against a, a, a top 15 team in the country. Um, and start that game and, and honestly had some good uh, good moments. Um, we wish we had an opportunity to play him more minutes in the second half because but because of foul trouble and because of how the game flow went, um, we decided to go into a different direction. But I think for the most part, uh, for our young guys, it, it, it was definitely a confident booster. Um, Nigel Pack, you know, get 21 points. Um, and I still think he has some left on the table and to play uh, 37 minutes is always big. Um, but the next step for us is not accepting just moral victories. Um, obviously, like you said, we played hard. Um, but now the next step is to start, start turning those to wins and, uh, and getting that in the wins column. You know, how big was Selton there? You know, he plays uh, almost 33 minutes. But that's another one that's been maybe kind of been on the injury bug. And, and it's just trying to find his way. Just how big was him? Because he, he had big baskets at the right time, too. Exactly. Um, and Selen is, is, is one of our emotional leaders. Um, he's a dog. Uh, he's a guy that can get our team going because of the plays that he makes, not only on the offensive end, but obviously we know on the defensive end. Um, and I think he did a great job of sparing, had it, sparing that or uh, being the front line of that, especially on the first half. Um, being the front line of our defense. Um, so selling always, I'm always proud of selling. Selling is, is is a fighter, is a warrior, and that's what we kind of told our guys to be soldiers today. Um, and Selen always embodies that nature. Um, and obviously, we're all we're all proud of our guys. The Wildcat Nation should be proud of our, proud of our guys and the fight that we had. And for you playing here, uh, you know, you had your playing days here, and you had your moments in the as a player. But with you being able to step in for Bruce tonight, how big of an honor was that for you? Even though you know he was in it with the protocols. Uh, uh, a, a super honor. I, obviously, first when you heard the news, you're worried about your coach's health. Uh, he's like he's like my basketball father figure for me. You know what I mean? And I call Christopher Lowry like my uncle. Uh, those guys are like mentors to me. Um, and, and obviously, you know, I, I just told Brian in the, in the radio on Coach Weber's uh, radio show. Uh, I hope they're proud. Um, coach Weber has done an amazing job of not only raising a guy like myself, but other young coaches, um, people that he's coached in the past. And that's where his legacy should start um, is how well he's done of, of, a, of a coaching tree um, and giving young guys like myself, like a, a coach Lowry, like a Matt Painter, like a, a Chester Frazier that was here, a Brad Corn that was here. Uh, a chance, you know, he took me to USA basketball. That gave me an opportunity. Um, that gave me some coaching confidence to be around those guys. Um, so 
I'm 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 proud uh, to be in this opportunity because it's a special special opportunity. Um, not just for myself, uh, alumni everywhere. Uh, my I, I haven't even looked at my phone yet, so I can imagine my former teammates uh, is either is either coming at me because I didn't do something right, or they're probably proud in some formal way. But um, I'm open to hearing all the criticism. Obviously, for me, um, I'm young. Um, I'm going to learn from this. Uh, we lost. It's funny. I'm sorry. I'm talking a lot. Uh, we talked about it. Uh, Coach Weber, if we would have won, the win would have went to him. But because of the loss, it'd be the first loss of my uh, coaching career. So I started off on the wrong note, but we'll get it back some way, somehow. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate it. Uh, next question to Tim Iverson. There we go. Um, Shane, you mentioned that that uh, you guys went over for nine in the second half from three. Is that the shots? not going in or was there something different that, that Texas was able to do defensively to kind of rein you guys in on, on, on that level? Obviously Texas is an amazing, probably the best defensive team or one of the best defensive teams in the country. Um, we thought out of those nine threes, a lot of them were good shots. Um, also some of those came late, uh, just trying to come back. Um, but it was a key segment in the second half when we took some kind of rush shots, some rush threes. Um, and, and, and that's where we got to be smarter and have poise and, and understand time and momentum and flow, game flow uh, uh, to, to make the right decisions. But for the most part, I thought our shot selection was great. Um, we had 24 points in the paint out of 57 points. So we obviously got to keep attacking the rim. But now when we attack in the rim and we make teams converge, we got to get to a situation where we can shoot a high percentage, especially in games like this. And then Nigel mentioned that before the game, you guys kind of, that had some music on. We're doing some jumping around to kind of get get pumped up. Was 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 that kind of your idea to kind of get some get some energy going going into the game? Um, a little bit. Uh, but I think uh, Coach Henderson also was 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 talking about that. Uh, I think he was playing on my youthful uh, ambiance and trying to get some music and get those guys going on. Uh, get them guys going. Um, we talked about honestly also of trying to do something different, um, which is setting the tone early in the start of games. Um, obviously, like I said earlier, we've kind of been lethargic to start the games and it cost us and some of our losses and even some of our wins. So that was a big thing. Uh, the big uh, kind of reason behind that uh, was to get just to give our guys some juice. And um, they came out early and they fought, man. And, and we can't be more proud of our guys. Okay. Next question to Ryan Gilbert. Hey, Shane, do you think there was ever a point tonight where your team kind of hit, uh, hit a wall with all the fatigue going on with, you know, being shorthanded? Um, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, we, you don't want to go into a situation where you're making excuses. We'll never make excuses. We don't, we don't accept more victories here at Kansas State. Um, I think it was a point, but, you know, the first thing that goes with when, when teams get fatigued is their mental. Um, and their mental toughness and the mental IQ. And that's some of the, 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 the shot selection and those key plays um, early into the middle of that second half that we just didn't execute um, and make the right and necessary plays. Uh, you know, even the start of the half, we tried to run something, didn't necessarily execute that. So some of that is just sustained. And that's kind of before we got to hit that wall. Um, that's just more about sustaining um, and staying mission focused or whatever the details that or the coaches are giving to the, to the student athletes, to the players. Um, for the most part. And then most of this season, slow starts have really bugged your team. It was the opposite tonight. How encouraging was it to get off to such a strong start? Definitely was encouraging. Um, obviously, like you said, to be shorthanded. Um, I figured we would we would fight and we would have uh, some of that resolve early. Um, but I thought we would have a, do a better job of making it tighter down the stretch uh, and sustaining that energy. But obviously, that's something that is that has hampered us in the past is the, 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 the setting the tone. We talked about being first, being first to everything we do, whether it's getting on the loose ball, whether it's the first to go block out, or even just simply we, we got in our game goals being the first to score, to, to score the basketball. Um, and that's something we did today. Um, obviously, like I said, we're proud of that, but it's a lot, 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 a lot left for us to get better at um, because we need to start taking these to wins. Thank you, Shane. Appreciate you, Ron. You know that. Uh, next question to Grant Flanders. What's up, Coach? So I asked Nigel this. You're going to get Coach Weber to start jumping around with you guys before the game to try to get that juices going from here on out? 
Hey, coach could do it. Uh, coach could do it. Uh, the thing is, our players got to play Chance the Rapper. Uh, I don't know if our players listen to Chance the Rapper, but Coach Weber's favorite rapper is Chance. Um, I don't know if that's I like a. That. Yeah, I don't know if it's a Midwest thing. I like Chance. I love Chance. You know what I mean? Um, but I don't know if our guys is is Chance hasn't come out with anything new thus far. But uh, we got to get. We definitely got to get some Chance on, going on in the locker room, and maybe Coach Weber can start jumping around and dancing. I just don't want him to do that dab that he did uh, back in the back in the day with, with Wesley Wando and them. And then this is a multiple part question, but, um, you know, Ish Masood put in a tough spot as one of your only bigs of the night. Also, Carlton Lingard, who I thought had a nice game, considering he only played a total of seven minutes going into it. But how disappointing is it to see Masood only, you know, get zero rebounds for the game? And then how big was it missing guys like Casey Ziagu and uh, Davion Bradford? Obviously, uh, you know, when you talk about playing against Texas, the first thing that jumps on the board and Coach Henderson had to start watching. Um, to give me uh, give me some assistance in watching that. I'm watching them because this was my scout. Um, the first thing he said is, wow, they're so physical, especially getting to the offensive rebound. And uh, when you're playing against a team like this, and then you, this is no excuse for Ish because you got to do a better job of rebounding the ball, it's hard to rebound when you have to box a, a guy out that's really, really aggressive to get into the rim. And sometimes you got to do a better job of keeping your man out of the rebound and just say, I'm not going to get it, but you're not going to get it. Um, and that was part of our theme as well is not today. Um, we didn't we didn't necessarily execute that, especially when you talk about Timmy Allen getting 14 rebounds, four offensive. I thought Diesel uh, came in the game and gave them a uh, Dylan Diesel game, came in the game and gave him a nice punch. Um, but obviously not having our physicality inside uh, cost us in some parts of the game. Um, especially when you talk about a team like that. They started the game big with Timmy Allen playing the three, which he's usually kind of started at the four position. I think they did that also to match kind of what Mark was doing. Um, and Mark had 16 rebounds, so I think they did that to try to match that. Um, but at the end of the day, um, obviously, Ish got to raise his level in terms of rebounding and his physicality, physicality, but he does a lot of great things for us in other ways. Um, we're so appreciative to have him in our roster and program. But for the next step for him is to keep getting comfortable and keep getting better. Um, and he will do so. 2019 championship season, you know, you guys started 0-2 and, and then beat West Virginia and then went on a streak, you know, of only losing one or two conference games the rest of the way. Um, how important do you think getting this win and not falling to 0-3 in Morgantown this weekend will be? Obviously, it's going to be tough in Morgantown. They're, they're, they're coming off a loss. Um, they're, they're, they're always going to fight, and it's tough to play in Morgantown. It's, and Coach Huggins is a legend, and he's going to have them riled up and ready to play. Um, and when you speak about us, how important this game is, every game in the Big 12 is important. Obviously, we don't want to go down 0-3, but we just want to go 1-0. and um, that's our mantra. That's how we stay within a, within ourselves and try to stay mission focused. Um, it's just going one and zero. Um, it's going to be a, a, a big game for us. We got to have that fight. We got to have the same start and set the tone like we did. Um, but if we do that, we'll be 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 successful and staying within the game. And then we got to make the necessary uh, uh, steps uh, to sustain it and win at the end. Hey, Chance is one of my favorites in high school, so I respect that from Coach. But thank yeah, you, Coach. Yeah, we'll talk. I later. appreciate you. Any other questions for Shane before we let him go? Okay. Thank you, Shane. Appreciate it. No, thank you. Everybody appreciate you guys.